Cowboys. But right now, Garth Lagaway on the line, president of Atlanta United. And Garth, the biggest star in soccer coming into town this weekend. We spent a lot of time over the last few months talking about this and what might happen, what might play out. I'm curious to know what you think. We know that, you know, there are some challenges and whether he's going to be here, if he plays the entire match or not. Do you have any insight? I, look, I have no personal insight, and, and uh, you know, we are preparing for a game against Miami, and we need to win the game to, to make the playoffs. So uh, we don't need any more motivation from that. Uh, obviously, just reciting the facts, Messi sat out last night against mm-hmm. Bolivia. Uh, this is purely my opinion. Uh, no insider info, but that, in my opinion, that makes it more likely that Messi will play uh, in Atlanta on Saturday. Um, because he needed a little bit of a rest. He got it. They didn't want to play him at altitude. Argentina won easily, um, you know, with, with a rotated team. Um, but that should take some mileage off of Messi and, and make it more likely, uh, in purely my opinion, uh, that he might appear on Saturday. Hey, can you give us, Garth, some uh, headway or it's a heads up, I should say, on all our guys that were involved in international competition? Is everybody going to be back? Because I know that we had, like, obviously, y- Yorgos was doing stuff for Greece and, you know, Tiago was playing for the under-23s for Argentina. Everybody going to be back and ready to go for Saturday? Yep. We expect everybody to be physically be here in training tomorrow. Um, we had a couple guys that had some long flights coming from far away, um, but but I believe all the games now are wrapped up. Um, and we should have guys here, as, as I said, by tomorrow. So we cool. should have a full squad, and uh, we, we finally had one guy we've had a, a, just a nightmare visa process with, Jamal Tiare, um, and, and he got here uh, this week as well. Right. So we will have, uh, you know, knock on wood, uh, hopefully uh, a full-strength squad going into the Miami game on Saturday. I guess bribery doesn't work anymore when it comes to visas, things like that, huh? You can't just kind of free somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's frowned upon. Yeah. There, there was, I mean, this is, he was coming in from Senegal. I have not done an immigration process from Senegal before, so I, I can't claim to right. have a right. overarching opinion. But there was actual, uh, one of the delays was a, like a government shutdown. So it, it's not wow. just in America that that stuff happens. Mm. Yeah, imagine yeah. that. <laughs> Garth, uh, got to give you props. You know, a couple of months ago, maybe a month and a half or so ago, you were like, look, we're going to change this team. Um, we had a lot of time off. The team put in a lot of work. We look better. It feels better. Um, what do you accredit that to? Um, I, I think, obviously, we, we, you know, look, we changed five out of ten starters in the team. So yep. Yep. Uh, we changed a lot, you know, and, and credit to the coaching staff for – integrating the new guys and, and credit for the new guys for hitting the ground running and being willing to acculturate and, and acclimatize and um, be good teammates and, and want to be part of the group. And, you know, credit to the, the, the town identification recruitment staff, Carlos and his guys uh, for picking people, not just good players, but uh, the right personalities. So early returns, you know, we played four games more or less for that new group. Um, and we're, we're two, one and one. And so, you know, not out of the woods yet by any means, but, uh, got a three-game week coming up uh, with three teams that are below us in the current standings. And if we can have a big week uh, this week, then hopefully we can put ourselves in a real good position, uh, hopefully competing to host some home games in the playoffs. Had some big wins. I know for a minute there, it looked like we had Cincinnati on the ropes. And uh, unfortunately, they're, they're a very talented team, as you told us last time we were up there at yeah. the training facility. But uh, aside, and even that one, you showed this, some signs that this team is, is, has turned a corner. And then some of those little defensive things we always talk about kind of creeped in. But beating Nashville 4 nothing, beating Seattle, that was a hell of a way to start after the break. It really was. It felt good, to your point. It felt like we had some momentum. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, the Dallas game, the last of the four was not pretty. Uh, but I think it's a game that we've lost a couple of times earlier in the season. Right. And we found a way to, you know, to get a lead and, uh, you know, hang on for a draw in the end. And, <laughs> you know, on a day when the expected goals favored the home team, um, I thought we showed some grit and some character. And, and uh, you know, that was really encouraging well, uh, as well in, in, in addition to the influx of the talent. We're talking with Garth Lagoway, guys, here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Um, we expect the largest crowd, right? I mean, could we break a record on Saturday? Yeah, look, we got uh, over 400 media credential applications, wow. Wow. Um, which is the most we've had since MLS Cup 2018. Uh, in terms of ticket sales, we are pacing with MLS Cup 2018. Um, you know, so, you know, cautiously optimistic we're going to get there in the end and, and uh, you know, set a new uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium record. 
Um, certainly, you know, look, that's the goal. But that that's the buzz. That's the level of excitement for playing Miami. Uh, look, and that's the level of excitement, I think, for our, for what's effectively our new team. Uh, coming in with with half the team changed and, and a little bit of momentum as we talked about and and hopefully some optimism for uh, you know not just Miami but DC and Montreal coming up this week. Uh, I know we talk about this all the time in the standings, but uh, Cincinnati we mentioned that those guys are really at another level right now. But you, Atlanta United, is just two wins, six points from being in second place with New England. Just a, a winner, a draw from getting you right up into the top four in the playoffs. How important is that as far as the seeding and who you're going to see in the playoffs? So we get into the top four. That means for that first round, which is best of three, um, that means you'd, you'd have the potential to have two home games. So, so we want to try to get to the top four. Uh, you know, that's been our goal since the beginning of the season. As you said, we're within shooting distance. We've got some other teams that have played one game less than we have. Right. Um, but that means they probably have to make that game up some point midweek or during a FIFA break where maybe they're shorthanded. Uh, so we'll see how it plays out. But we, we can only control ourselves and, we got to make the most of these next three games in particular uh, because the last three games are pretty tough. Um, if you talk about at right. Philly, Columbus at home, at Cincy to finish, um, you know, no, one, no one's going to show any mercy there. Um, but but we got a real opportunity over these next three games. Um, as far as Gonzalo Pineda, you know, we were going through those stretches uh, earlier this season and, and there were a lot of questions there. I know you say that you will evaluate and everybody will be evaluated after the season. Uh, I'm just curious, can you give us your take on, on Gonzalo and how he's handled the changes and everything that's going on with this team? Yeah, look, I think we've thrown a lot at him as a young coach. Um, you know, we went through a period in the in the summer where we had to, because of our salary cap situation, we had to subtract before we could add. <laughs> and I think we went through a little bit of a rough patch there. Um, but again, we appear to be turning the corner and, um, you know, we have a good enough sample size uh, to be able to make an evaluation at the end of the season. So, we, you know, we played four games with, with you know, our new team. Um, we got six more to go. Um, but we'll be able to look at that 10-game sample, I think, at the end of the year and say, okay, you know, did we make progress? Were we material materially better? Are we headed the right direction? Did we win a playoff series? Um, you know, are we getting these moments with our fans in Mercedes-Benz Stadium at home where we're creating some memories and we're building momentum and we're, setting ourselves up to be title contenders next year because that has to be the direction that has to be the aspiration um and you know we'll sit down at the end of of, of uh, the season and see where we are right it's a uh, dukes and bell guys we're live here at falcons more coming up on falcons as we get ready for sunday we're talking about the big match on saturday five o'clock mercedes-benz by the way if uh messi does play or busquets i think it's safe to say that the players on the pitch will not be standing in awe like they kind of were when we saw them the first time down in miami yeah, look, we were a little shell shocked, right? I mean, it kind of looked right. that way a little bit. We had some some younger players in that group that were a little bit naive. I think, uh, I think the the stat that jumped out, I think that you guys actually uh, mentioned on your show was, you know, we didn't commit a single foul uh, in that game. Uh, so, you know, we're we're not going to do that again. You know, we we've seen them play. To your point, uh, you know, to use a baseball analogy, this is the second time through the order. You know, so no matter who, how good the starting pitcher is. Um, we, you know, we, we've seen them, you know, we, we've seen his stuff. We, we're, we're better equipped to deal with it. Um, and look, and I think what we've done in the summer, we've, is we've really injected Three. experience into some key positions on the field um, in, in wing and in midfield um, at the back. We've I believe we've lost oh, Caleb Wiley staying home a little bit more often as a left back. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we've done some things to hopefully address this and, and put ourselves in a better position than we were um, when we got, we got, let's be honest, we got wiped out in Miami, uh, you know, a couple months ago. Garth, let's go get a dub, man. Uh, we are watching, cheering you on, and uh, hopefully this will be an exciting match for Atlanta, but also for MLS uh, this weekend. Guys, you can listen to it right here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Garth Lagerway, appreciate you as always, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Cool. Absolutely.